Hey, today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about my model of communication. Um, my model of communication is revolving around swim coaching. And the reason why I did this was because swim coaching was the job that I spent the most time developing my communication skills. At first, I thought I just had to use my experience since I had been swimming since I was a little kid. But as I continued to school, to coach, I realized that communication is really what was the key to success when it came to swimming and teaching a new skill. So I ended up developing a way of coaching, which kind of goes with the model of communication, which is pretty funny. So I'm here to discuss with you the methods of communication that I use, as well as the steps I use to kind of get my swimmers to be successful. So step number one is sending the message. So I would simply send the message using verbal and visual communication. Verbal communication is basically me telling them exactly what I wanted to see. So if I wanted them to swim freestyle, I would tell them the steps on how to swim freestyle. And then I would reinforce verbal communication with visual communication by showing them exactly what I wanted to see. So those arm motions are the arm motions I would show them for freestyle. So using my verbal and visual communication, I would move on to the second step, and that's receiving the message. So once I did the first step, I would then use the question and answer method to see if they received what I had just said. So I would ask them, what are the steps to freestyle, and have them repeat it back to me. And then I would ask them, what should your arms look like in freestyle and have them show that to me. So after when we got through with that and I thought that they had a good grasp on what I wanted, I would then send them on their way, which is the third step, which is response. So I would get a good response from them using nonverbal communication and visual communication. So I would see their nonverbal communication pretty quickly. If they were frustrated or confused, I could tell Almost immediately after they left the wall, they're kids. They can't really hide that stuff. So I would see their nonverbal communication and even their visual communication. If it didn't match up with the one that I had sent to them, then I knew there was a problem. So that leads us to the fourth step, which is the feedback. So once they would come back to the wall, I would use verbal communication and ask them how it went. They would tell me the problems that they had if they liked it, if they didn't like it, or sometimes it went great and we didn't have anything to work on. So the feedback was really when I realized if I needed to continue the cycle or not. So if it was bad, I would then send a new message and hope that they received it in a different way, got a good response, got good feedback, and then we can move on to the next set. So in conclusion, using that cycle of sending the message, receiving the message, getting a response, getting feedback is really what I, was the key to success for swimming. And those four forms of communication were the main ones that I used to kind of get that cycle in motion. So just all in all, the communication model that I've developed really went hand in hand what I'd already been doing with swim coaching for the past four years. So it was really interesting to do this assignment, especially because they had so many similarities with how I communicated with my kids. So thank you so much for watching.